Hi there, my name is Christian Flutter and today let's talk about vitamin D. So what is vitamin D? Well, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin that kind of works a bit like a hormone inside our body in the sense that it can activate or modify or regulate the function of a lot of different cells in our system. And in fact, that's why we see it's involved in so many different processes from inflammation regulation to allergic responses to bone health. So it's involved in a lot of things. But whereabouts do we actually get it from? Well, our diet does play a little bit of a part of that. You like your, your nice wild fatty fish, like your mackerels and things like that. And eggs are a wonderful source of vitamin D, as are some types of mushroom. But the majority of vitamin D that we get comes from, that's right, a bit of sunlight. This stuff out here is where we get the majority of our vitamin D. The sunlight itself comes in and it helps to convert substances in our skin to turn into vitamin D. So this is where we get the majority of our vitamin D from. And now this can actually be measured. And the measurement that we look at is measured in nanomoles per liter. Now in Australia, the recommended level of healthy vitamin D is above 50 nanomoles per liter. But we can actually change our vitamin D levels based on the season. And in the summer months, they recommend that this number should actually be higher looking at 60 to 70 nanomoles per liter. Some researchers, however, think 70 nanomoles per liter is still too low and recommend getting above 75 nanomoles. Now, the reason for this is because certain health conditions become apparent at levels below 75 nanomoles. So this leads to the question of how many people are actually deficient in vitamin D? Now, recent Australian data suggests that one in three, up to one in three Australians are actually deficient in vitamin D, meaning their levels are below that of 50 nanomoles per litre. If you go down to the southern states, however, we're looking at Victoria and southern New South Wales, this value actually increases to one in two can be deficient in vitamin D. Now this is important because if I'm a bit deficient in vitamin D, does this increase my risk of developing certain conditions? And in fact, can taking a vitamin D supplement help prevent or help me get past certain conditions? Well, researchers have looked in this and they've found vitamin D to be so incredibly helpful for so many things, especially if you're starting off as being a little bit deficient. One of the first things they looked at is respiratory function. Now the WHO, the World Health Organization, put out a study on this one in 2017 and they made the statement, three reviews consistently showed a benefit of vitamin D supplementation for preventing respiratory tract infection in mainly, mainly in children younger than 16 years. Follow this up with the British Medical Journal putting out another statement saying that vitamin D supplementation was safe and it protected against acute respiratory tract infection overall. Sharan in 2012, vitamin D supplementation decreases the events related to respiratory tract infections. Bergman, 2013, vitamin D has a protective effect against rand uh, RTI, respiratory tract infections and dosing once daily seems most effective. So it's good for immune system function. But you know what else our immune system's used for? Allergies. Back in 2015, Merzikani did a study on this one as well, saying that vitamin D may potentially decrease the severity of asthma and allergies. Vitamin D deficiency at birth is associated with a higher risk of developing atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema. And vitamin D deficiency might impair epithelial barrier integrity. Now this epithelial layer may be something in the gut and the gut is where we might be seeing food sensitivities coming from. In fact, the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology wrote a commentary asking, questioning vitamin D deficiency and its role with food allergies. And the reason for this is in countries where we see relative vitamin D deficiency, we see relatively high food allergies as well. Now we've talked about food allergies, we've talked about chest-based things. What's a little chest thing going around at the moment? Possibly a COVID pandemic? What about vitamin D and COVID? Likely vitamin D deficient status was associated with increased COVID-19 risk. Uh, ample evidence that's, that um, non-communicable diseases such as your hypertension, cardiovascular diseases are associated with low vitamin D levels which lead 
to increasing the risk of severe COVID-19 infection. And in fact, vitamin, D's are, vitamin D levels are lower in hospitalized COVID-19 patients than in population-based controls. And these patients have a higher prevalence of deficiency. So could vitamin D deficiency lead to a stronger presentation of this COVID infection? But what about other things? In 2016, Crozier et al. found that vitamin D deficiency increased the likelihood of developing adiposity, otherwise known as a bit of fat in babies. More than that, how about autism? Vitamin D deficiency um, increases your likelihood of having autistic children. In fact, the quote was, an increasing amount of evidence points to the possibility that gestational and early childhood vitamin D deficiency cause some cases of autism. What about your child's IQ? Now this one is very new to me as well. I did not know this about vitamin D, but a study by Miller in 2020 came to this conclusion. Second trimester maternal vitamin D was positively associated with child's IQ at four to six years of age, suggesting that gestational vitamin D status may be an important predictor of neurocognitive development. Now, this all of a sudden makes those vitamin D tests that you get done during your pregnancy that much more important. So what can we do if we're a little bit deficient in that vitamin D? Well, we can look at taking some supplements. Supplements are typically measured in IU, international units, and in infants up to 12 months of age, up to 1,000 IU per day is considered perfectly safe. In fact, if you've been found to be a little bit deficient in vitamin D during pregnancy, and you've been advised to give a couple of drops of vitamin D to your baby as well, those drops are typically around 200 IU. Now 200 IU is wonderful if, you're, if your vitamin D levels are already up here, but it may not be enough to bring an already low level up. And that's where that 1000 IU may be required. This is perfectly safe to be done orally directly to your child. Between 12 months and five years of age, we can actually look at a much higher dosage, up to five to 6,000 IU per day. Now this is best done if we spread it out throughout the day. So we're taking 1,000 IU at multiple points throughout the day to reach a total of five to 6,000 IU. Now beyond five years of age, we're actually looking at an even higher dose as well. In severely deficient kids, we can be taking up to 10,000 IU of vitamin D per day. Again, spread out throughout the entire day is gonna be a wonderful way of getting that vitamin D level back up again inside your child. Now the other option is getting a bit of sunlight. 30 minutes of sunlight in midday in the middle of summer to all of your skin will get you up to 20,000 IU of vitamin D in that period. But how often are you running around completely starkers in the middle of the day in the middle of summer, especially in somewhere like Victoria? Very, very rarely, very rarely. So what is better is getting 15% of your skin covered for around 30 minutes, not covered, exposed for around 30 minutes. If you're starting to get a bit sunburned, you might have gone a little bit too far. So try and dose your amounts so you don't get too uh, reacted to the sun there. So that's a little bit about vitamin D, a little bit about dosage. It's a very interesting topic. It's a very controversial topic in regards to dosage, but if you'd like some more information, you are welcome to contact me and I can provide you with any of the information that we've talked about today. In the meantime, get out there, get some sunlight, enjoy some vitamin D, and I'll speak to you again soon.